Yoda guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max, I am the host of the channel, welcome back to everybody that's returning and a big thank you to my patrons over on Patreon, make sure to visit Subscribestar, Patreon, my PayPal, Tipjar and Instagram to support the Black Jersey elsewhere. Righto, we're going to get into a video about Will Jordan, the All Black winger who also plays at fullback for the Crusaders and Tasman, he was World Rugby's breakthrough player of the the year last year so he won quite a few accolades he got quite a few new fans from all around the world last year I'm gonna be doing a bit of a player analysis on Jordan the last player I covered in this type of video was Dalton Papali and I'm going to explain to you guys why Jordan's so good um, after I present to you his stats which will explain how he is so good and basically I'm going to explain what can you do to stop this in-form winger who is just getting better and better by the game it seems. Firstly, we'll run through his stats for the 2021 international season just to give you guys a bit of a recap on what he achieved for the All Blacks. So yes, um, he did become a regular starter for the All Blacks last year after playing just two tests in 2020. He scored a double in his second test off the bench, so it was quite obvious he was going to get even better. <laughs> He'd been talked up for a very long time prior to his test debut. He was um, first selected in the Crusaders for 2018. He just didn't play that year though because he got injured, so he debuted in 2019 and scored eight tries for them that year. 2021, after becoming a regular starter for the All Blacks, his impact was instant. Five tries against Tonga, he eventually scored 15 tries for the international year, and that's only off 11 tests. Yes, I know. Will Jordan scored 15 tries from only 704 minutes of international rugby. Pretty impressive stuff right there. His running metres, as you would expect, were off the chain for sure. Um, 732 metres run off, um, goodness me, just 63 carries, so quite massive once again. 31 defenders beaten as well, while he also made 28 clean breaks. It just seems no matter what you did, this guy was finding holes in your defence. Speaking of defence, he's also very good at that. He made 39 tackles in 2021 for the All Blacks, and he also made 5 turnovers for them, so yeah. Solid defence right there. That's probably come out of the fact that he plays fullback at club level. Um, I'm not sure he's ever going to play fullback for the All Blacks though. As you can see from the fullback depth chart, he has yet to play a single minute at 15 for Ian Foster. Though he has played the most minutes of any All Black under Fozzie and the 14 Juicy. He can pass as well, which I really like. That's probably game from playing at fullback. <laughs> um, so yes, 52 passes and 6 offloads for the All Blacks despite playing as a winger. Pretty incredible stuff. Now, you've listened to the stats, <laughs> and you're probably thinking to yourself, man, he's so good. So now, as I said before, we're going to get into why Jordan is so unbelievably good. By doing this, um, we're going to kind of look through a few tries he scored for the All Blacks. Most of the tries he did score last year were from opposition mistakes, but the ones that were genuinely constructed might give us a bit of a clue as to how he works as a player. For the senses, remember this is fair use, please don't delete my channel. So one of the first really good well-worked tries we saw from Will Jordan was against Fiji. So first off to start this attack, the All Blacks place David Havili at first five at set piece. Three Fijian defenders are hooked in because he has a ball in both hands. Havili is used as a crash ball runner forcing Fijian backs into the breakdown and so there aren't many forwards available to make the turnover since some of them are still getting back on side after the scrum. Aaron Smith is getting the ball from the ruck just as some of the Fijian forwards are still getting back on side. The use of Havili at 10 in the first phase allows for Mawonga to be 
free with two outside options. Rather than standing flat, Moonga also comes onto the ball at pace because Will Jordan does his homework on the opposition and analyzes how they play. He understands what's going on. He runs onto the ball at pace as well, supporting Moonga. One of the great traits about Will Jordan that you'll notice throughout this video is he runs excellent support lines. The support line is a skill you're going to see once again when we face up against South Africa in Townsville for the 100th test between the two nations. So first off, Cody Taylor runs through to make a clean break after two missed tackles by Lou Diaga and Evan Etzebeth. Jordan spots this immediately because he often comes off his wing to assist around the field with defence and breakdowns. So Jordan overtakes Khaleesi and Vermeulen who have no chance at taking Taylor down because they're too slow. Due to the Springboks game plan revolving around a kicking for territory, they usually have Andre Pollard standing in at wing when the opposition has the ball. Um, as you guys know, defence lines do tend to be quite flat nowadays, but South Africa, instead of placing a winger in the fullback as the only options out of the main line, South Africa has Pollard. So Pollard comes across to do that, so that way they can get the best kickers getting the territory for them. Pollard is perfectly in position to tackle Taylor, but when he and LaRue stands deep, they tend to cover each corner of the pitch. Pollard may have tackled Taylor, but Jordan has run such a brilliant support line, so LaRue has to drift from one side of the pitch to the other, and he just can't chase Jordan down. It's not just Jordan's brilliant support lines that allow him to score either. The chip and chase is his bread and butter, as we discovered on the end of year tour. Firstly against the USA, as I've explained, a lot of defences seem to be quite flat nowadays, taking after Andy Farrell's blitz defence as created in 2016 and used very well in the 2017 Lions tour. The USA, as we can see, have a very flat pattern and it's quite similar to what we can normally expect from South Africa. The USA, as you can see, have two players at the bottom of a ruck while there are 11 defenders in the main line. They're all standing pretty flat. Their right wing is Ryan James, who was on debut. He's only slightly behind the main line, as you can see just here. He's leaving the fullback with over half the pitch to manage on his own because he hasn't dropped back as he should be dropping back. Um, the USA's left winger, um, when the All Blacks begin to attack, as you can see, bites in to take out Damian McKenzie, and that leaves a huge hole for Jordan to run at. Now, the USA at fullback have a guy called Will Hooley, and he normally plays at first five. Um, the camera crew zoomed in quite far on Jordan when he scored this try, but as you can see from this other angle, Hooley clearly doesn't have the instincts to play at 15. He's shot up and he sprints to Jordan, who takes notice and reacts by kicking. Hooley rushes forward, and because of this, he ends up leaving over 30 meters of space for Jordan's kick to land. Jordan regathers his chip kick and scores. Now compare what Will Hooley did to Vili LaRue from South Africa. LaRue is an experienced player who pretty much uses the touchline as an extra defender. LaRue comes and he sees Jordan with searing pace and approaches Jordan with the same mindset. He forces Jordan out wider across the field in order for Jordan to outpace LaRue. Had LaRue been 10 metres closer to the All Blacks right hand side of the pitch, I don't think Jordan would have scored here. I'm not trying to take anything away from Jordan here, it's just a matter of the fact that not only did Jordan do his homework, Vili LaRue clearly did as well, and yes, he got very close to tackling Jordan despite being out of position. However, Will Hooley isn't the only player that's failed to do analysis on Jordan's chip kicking. So we see Jordan's chip kick working very well against both Wales and Ireland as well. Against Wales, we see Thomas Williams' aimless box kick fail to find touch. Jordan picks the ball up about 5 metres behind the halfway line, and yeah, there's a bit of miscommunication between Will Rollins and Josh Adams. Um, Will Rollins 
is a lock so he was never going to get Jordan and as the vision mixer cuts to another camera we pick up on the fact that Adams has made the same mistake as Will Hooley from the United States of America. Adams has shot up out of position to cover for Thomas Williams who is incredibly lazy and remains far back inside his own half after making the box kick. Williams is a halfback, Adams is a winger, they're in each other's positions, so Williams never had a chance of tackling Jordan, and yeah, Jordan pretty much just gets the ball and he scores from there. Everyone knew how that was going to end when two players have swapped positions with each other. The final try that we're analysing, we're going to see a bit of a combination of Jordan's skill sets. So both the chip and chase and the amazing support lines. So this one is against Ireland and David Havili and Sevu Reese do a great job at unlocking the space for Jordan who runs past an overlap created by James Lowe. We all know that Jordan eventually scores but we'll cut back to where we started and we also see that this Irish defence is probably the actual blueprint as to how you stop Will Jordan, the point I've made this video for. We've found one way to stop Jordan with Villy LaRue before, we now have another way to stop him through Andy Farrell's Ireland. So Andy Farrell, as I've said before in this video, yes, he's known for inventing the blitz defence style of defence, it's actually attack. Um, and yeah, they sprint to you every phase in this tactic, one after another in a flat line. But as you can see over here, this is actually a bit of a cover defense that Ireland have got. They have multiple lines of defense to cover chip kicks. Jordan beats low on the outside, as you've seen, but Keenan rushes in and attempts the tackle. Had Keenan stayed in position at fullback and not rushed up, Conway would have still been marking Ioane, and this of course would have meant the attack was a two on two. Ioane could have been tackled, Jordan could have been tackled. And so yeah, Jordan would have had to rely on his pace, but because Keenan rushes out of position to tackle Jordan, who chip kicks, Ioane and Jordan are now facing Conway on a two in one scenario. Ioane does a really good dummy, he gets tackled by Conway, Jordan runs off to score. So what can we learn from what Ireland did? What you need to do is you need to have more than just two players out of your defensive line. The cover defense has worked for a very long time under Scott Robertson's Crusaders and Will Jordan, though this is the greatest way to take him down, may know a few things about this style of defense as he performs it himself week in week out at club level. So yeah, what can we do? We can place about four players in the backfield, leaving the pods of forwards in the front to take the big collisions from the All Blacks forwards. If this is the case, there's no way Jordan's chip kicks are going to work. That's just basic common knowledge, considering the space that's all back there, it's all covered ridiculously. Will Jordan is a very talented player, and wow, he's going to get even better like I've been saying, but if some teams can capitalize on what I've said in this video, they could make Jordan's job of scoring tries way harder. Big thanks for watching this video guys. As I said before in this video, it's my pleasure to do this kind of videos and um, a big thanks to you guys for watching. If you're ever keen to support the Black Jersey, I'm also doing journalism on an independent website I've made with Brother Vincent who um, helps me out with social media on Instagram. So yes, I'm very busy here at the Black Jersey. If you're keen to support us financially, obviously head over to my Patreon, my Subscribestar, and my PayPal, tip jar. My uni fees are very expensive. As I normally say, you gotta get them done somehow. Once again, guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for viewing this channel. And fingers crossed, none of these tactics get picked up on. And fingers crossed, Will Jordan continues his try scoring form. <laughs>